Hey, are you lonely? Do you not really have any friends? Or maybe you do have friends, but you barely talk to them or maybe message once in a while, but don't meet up with them. I just watched this video about the loneliness epidemic. It was such a good video. I'll link it in the description. It's about how so many people these days are lonely and how loneliness is increasing over the years and decades that have been passing. Seeing these clips of people who say they're just haven't, they have no friend, that they have no one to talk to, it was quite heart-wrenching to watch. It reminded me of the loneliest time that I had back in 2014. In 2014, I was manic and psychotic, and you don't really have to know what those are other than I was believing things that was not real. I was having delusions, but at its core, the feeling that I had was that nobody understands what I'm going through. I am completely alone, and I have to walk a lonely path by myself for the foreseeable future. And it's a funny thing, when you're feeling crippling loneliness, I didn't cry in my bed. I went up to a wall and curled up and sat down sitting against the wall and started crying. So when I saw a scene in the first episode of Mr. Robot where the protagonist actually does the exact same thing, I knew the creators really understood what lonely people do. I don't even know why I did that. It was like a natural instinct. Actually, I did that about a couple times at two different nights. And the second time, Milo, the cat we had, came up to me and started rubbing himself against my knees and arms and hands. Milo's not a very affectionate cat, but I think he could tell that I needed company at the time. And a lot's happened since 2014 after I recovered and all that. But one of the fundamental differences from then and now is that I have a different belief about reality. The state which Zen Buddhists call Nirvana, the state that a lot of people are trying to reach, the state of enlightenment, is pretty well documented in this book Letting Go by David Hawkins. Let me read to you a passage which I read before in a previous video, but I think should be mentioned again. This is the what he felt when he reached this state of nirvana. There was no longer any feeling of a separate self and the pronoun I disappeared and became meaningless. Instead, there was the awareness of being all things. The interconnectedness of all things was starkly obvious. It was the holographic universe as described by the Buddha and by modern advanced theoretical physics, both of whom agree as to the intrinsic nature of the universe. Because everything was perfect, there was nothing to wish for, nothing to desire, nothing to create, and nothing to become. There was a profound familiarity to the awareness. It was as though one had always known it, as if one were home at last. Now, I'm not saying that just become enlightened and you'll be fine even if you're on your own because you'll feel this feeling of connectedness and everything will be fine, everything will seem perfect once you reach this state. Because people have been trying to reach this state <laughs> Some people try to reach this state their whole lives and fail. So I'm not saying tr try and reach this state, but instead I'm saying I think this state hints at the nature of reality, that everything is connected and that you are not alone. The reason you feel alone is because you're so disconnected from this state and you have this sense of separateness, which is the total opposite of this feeling of connected connectedness. Unless you're David Hawkins or a Zen Buddhist monk who's been trying to reach the state and has achieved it, I think the more practical thing to do is to reach out to people and actually connect with others. And that's what I've been trying to do over the last year and more recently. During the pandemic, I just stayed at home as much as I could and hardly talked or messaged even with any friends. But then at some point I thought, okay, I've had enough time being alone. And I, it's not like I was miserable, I was actually pretty happy just having so much screen time and just decompressing. But gradually a shift happened within me and now I'm trying to reach out to friends. I've been organizing lunches, getting people together. I message friends and say, hey, what are you up to? Let's meet up, when are you free? I've also attended meetups to meet up new people. I've made a few friends from that. And also through the part-time YouTuber Academy community, I've met a few people like my accountability partner Niels who lives in Germany whom I've never seen in person but we talk pretty much every single day checking up in, on each other's progress on a daily basis. Thinking about it, just saying that right now, I'm becoming better and better friends with Niels more than any of my other friends, even close high school friends because I barely talk to them at all. So I'm not only reaching out to friends that I had, I've used the internet to try and meet new friends and reach out to people and be proactive trying to talk to more people and also to have more face-to-face -face time. In most cases, if 
I don't initiate, we just don't talk or see each other. So what I'm saying is it's on me to reach out to friends and say let's meet up because well hardly any of my, my friends are doing the same to me. And I think for most people that's going to be the case. If you want to meet up with someone, you have to be the one that reaches out. You can't expect them to reach out to you. And you're probably going to have to reach out again and again every single time. I'm pretty happy with the progress I've made so far. Overcoming loneliness, reaching out to people and all that takes effort, but it has been worth it for me. It still is an ongoing process and it probably will be worth it for you too. And if you believe any of this stuff about what I just read you from the book Letting Go, if you are feeling lonely, it's because of this feeling that you're separate and disconnected from everything, when in fact, that's not the nature of reality in this holographic world. But you don't have to believe that. You don't have to reach this state of nirvana or become enlightened. If you have friends that you haven't seen in a while or don't talk to that often, then probably a good idea to reach out to them. And if you don't really have any friends, then go on the internet and try to find a bunch of people who like the same things you do and try to meet up with them at an event. Having just said all that, I know there are friends that I haven't been in touch with for a while, so I'm going to reach out to them after I make this video. I'm going to try and set up a meetup so that we can see each other face to face, given that they're in the same city as me. Man, it is just about 11 p.m. right now. This is a very late video for me because I've been watching YouTube about loneliness and all that. Here's to 1% better every day, baby. It's good to get an early start to the day. I woke up early at around 6.30 a.m. Got my stream of consciousness writing done. Planned out the calendar for the rest of the day. Let's see how well I follow it today. I'm gonna do push-ups, pull-ups, and dips today. For the first time, I'm gonna stop counting reps and just do roughly 20 minutes supersetting them back to back to back. The downside is I'll lose track of my progress of how much I'm improving each day or each week. But I've heard from a couple people, including you, Eric, that it's not all that helpful to count reps and that it's kind of tedious, which it is. So I'm just gonna gauge on the time under tension and in general, the workout session length in total. Let's do this, baby. Look who came to check me out while I'm working out. <laughs> Tigger. <laughs> Twenty minutes and a half. I feel good about that workout. Mission accomplished. It is snowing a lot. 